This is Rob Carbone, and you're listening to BD4. He loops out the left field. Going to be a tough play. Jeter on the run. Makes the play. Oh, and flies into the stands. Oh, what a play by Derek Jeter. There it goes. Deep to left. Really deep. Stay up. Oh, my goodness. What a shot by Aaron Judge. Oh, play back left field. You've got to be kidding me. Goodbye, home run. I swear to the Lord. to the back end of the grandstand in left field. The San Chino. No, oh, that Gary is scary. Ball game over. Yankees win. Ah! Yankees win. I mean, that was insane. That was classic Yankees Red Sox, right? That was your typical Yankees Boston matchup that we've at least seen over the past couple of seasons. And man, that was so good, man. I, <laughs> you know, back and forth slugfest. Um, you know, I'm watching the recap right now on the post game show. They're, they're showing the highlights rather. And um, man, Aaron judge, I guess we'll start with Aaron judge and we'll kind of work our way backwards from game three, but I really want to talk about game three because that's what everyone wants to talk about. <laughs> Oh, man. So I'm recording this literally maybe 15, 25 minutes, I'd say. 25 minutes after the game tops. Um, But, yeah. What's going on, everybody? This is Rob Carbone, and you're listening to BD4, where there's no better way to get your Yankees and Knicks analysis. But the Yankees, man, they come back. Well, it was a back-and-forth battle, again, all night. But Aaron Judge with the big, big, big home runs. Put an S at the end of that. Um, <laughs> so here, here's how it went down. We had, you know, not very fond of him. Big pussy Paxton on the mound. And um, no, but, but James Paxton didn't have it. And he, it doesn't look like he's he's right at the moment. Um, I guess we'll dive into my concerns there in a little bit. But Paxton starts... Can only go three innings, you know, him not being sharp, the velocity still not there, combined with some sloppy defense, um, you know, puts the Yankees in a hole early. You know, Bogart, uh, Alexander Bogarts hits a big first inning home run, Boston's up a little bit, Yanks are down two zip, but the second inning comes, Aaron Judge, a big three-run blast, puts the Yankees up three to two. Third inning comes along, again, Paxton not right yet. Um, gives up, I think, three three singles in the inning. All of them drive in a couple of runs. Um, puts Boston back on top 5-3. Come that bottom of the third inning. Here we go again. Yankees answer back. But this time it's with a pair of doubles. Gary Sanchez starting to wake up. Goes the other way for a second consecutive night with an RBI double. Gio Urshela, not long afterwards, gets a big RBI double too. So the Yanks tie the game up 5-5. Five to five. Fifth inning comes along, Bogarts hits another home run. Yanks, again, <laughs> find themselves down 6-5. to five. But in that bottom of the fifth, Luke Voigt now chiming in with the home run. 6-6 six to six tie game. Seventh inning comes, Yankee bullpen still a bit shaky. Rafael Devers blasts one to right field. This was a shot. Puts Boston back on top 7-6. to six. But here we go, that eighth inning, fast forward a bit. DJ LeMayu gets the big, you know, oppo field, oppo, um, opposite field single, as he always does, to play to run. So that that brings the Yankees closer. Um, he's on first. Judge comes to the plate once again. That's why I love them, too. That's why the, the Judge batting second thing is kind of growing on me, because I love him tandem with DJ. Um, so DJ gets on base with the single. Judge comes up to the plate. And again, there it is, a big blast to put the Yankees on top, 9-7. to seven. His second home run of the game, his fifth in a row, 
five home runs and or six home runs in five games. And the Yankees take the victory once Zach Britton closes it out. But this fucking team, man, they are just on fire right now to start their season 7-1. and one. Aaron Judge is just ridiculous on some ridiculous tear. You know, he's tearing the cover off the ball. The OPS is, I'm sure, it's well over 1,000. The batting average is sitting right where it usually does, you know, 270-plus. Um, the on-base percentage is... He's not walking as much, but that's because he's tearing the fucking cover off the ball. Judge is on fire. Urshela's starting to hit the ball like he did last season. Sanchez might be starting to wake up and get, you know, maybe he's going to get on one of his good streaks because we know how he can be hot and cold. Um, Luke Voigt has start, kind of started to be productive lately. Um, and, and what can you say about DJ LeMayu, man? <clears throat> I mean, this guy is just the ultimate rally guy, the ultimate guy to start up. You know, a rally, the catalyst. And and A Rod said it. You know, and every time A Rod talks, I know he's annoying, but he he's very smart. He's got a smart baseball mind, and I find myself agreeing with him so fucking much. Um because he says it all the time, just like I say it all the time. Contact wins championships. Yes, you need power, but you need those guys who can make contact because they're reliable, because you know they can get on base. And they're going to be those guys who are going to hit the ball at a frequent rate, right? They're going to get on base because they can hit the ball. They will drive in runs when you got men on second, men on third. They will start a rally when there's nobody on and they're leading off an inning. They will keep that rally alive with two outs. And that's who DJ LeMayu is. So Aaron Judge, the best Yankee player. DJ LeMayu, the most valuable Yankee player. That's the way I look at it. But, man, this team with a collective effort tonight... And a collective effort so far all season. You can't be seven and one, and you know, ha- not have it be a team thing because you know Judge is hot again. DJ's hot. Geo starting to hit. Sanchez is alive. Voigt starting to hit. Stanton's been you know, steady all year. It's it's very good right now offensively for this Yankees team. And so a big win tonight, man, to sweep Boston in the home opener. Um, Man, I, I'm sorry I'm talking so fast and I'm all hyped up on that adrenaline, man, because that was a huge game jumping up and down in my in my fucking living room um, after that one. But wow, Aaron Judge, he looks like he did when he was a rookie in 2017, right? He's healthy and he's tearing the cover off of the fucking baseball. He's not missing anything. He's making a hard contact. And when you make hard contact and your name is Aaron Judge, that ball is going 450 plus feet like it did twice tonight. Uh, it's He's unbelievable at the moment. You know, he's a five-tool talent when he's healthy. And he's never been that healthy outside of that rookie season. But we're finally getting a healthy judge. And again, it might be, you know, one of the side effects to having this 60-game season. But hey, when the Yankees went and signed Stanton, they also said this on the broadcast tonight. That this is what they wanted. Where they wanted Stanton and Judge to just mash home runs. They wanted them to be that powerful presence that scares American League pitching. And you know, eight home runs combined between the two of them right now in, in just as many games. I'll sign up for that any fucking day. So amazing, amazing start to the season for Aaron Judge. Very solid start to the season. Seven and one, first placed um in all of baseball for the New York Yankees. And uh I couldn't be more happy with the way they're playing right now. Now, of course, it's the regular season. We knew they were going to have a successful um, regular season, but I think I'm just excited because they never usually get off to these fast starts. You know, we always have to wait a couple of weeks as Yankees fans to have the Yankees find their rhythm, you know, but game three was great. The series was good. You know, game two, it was a five to two win. Um, Another short outing from a Yankee starter, and we're going to touch on that in a second. Um, But Tanaka... Only goes a few. Bullpen has to come in, and they did really good. A bunch of random journeyman pitchers came in. Um, Luis Avalon, Nick Nelson, who made his debut and threw three hitless innings, um, and David Hill later on pitched a, a clean inning or two. Um, and, you know, the three random relievers came in and pitched six plus innings of, of scoreless baseball. Um, but on the other side, to get their five runs, Aaron Judge hits a, hits a first inning home run. Um, I think of the second inning, Geo hits that big grand slam to put the Yankees up five nothing. You know, and again, Tanaka was shaky. The defense was also shaky again, um, but you know they got it done. And in game one, it was pretty. It was pretty. Um, 
similar. Gio hits a home run, I think, in the fourth. Um, Judge hit a home run, obviously, earlier than that, I think, in the third. Um, and later, Brett Gardner capped it off to make it 5-1 to one in the eighth. But um, they got strong pitching, though, um, starting pitching from Montgomery, who I'm very excited for, for Jordan Montgomery. You know, I am excited for him just because I think he can be that guy who goes six innings and doesn't really fall too far from his norm, up or down. I think he'll be a very reliable middleman, right? Somebody who can go out there, give you quality starts like he did um, so often in that rookie season he had uh, before he got the uh, Tommy John surgery. So he looks good. He was thrown 93-94. You know, usually... He'll throw 92, 91, 93, but he was throwing a little harder than he usually did. And he was locating and he was mixing up his wide variety of pitches. And, you know, he looked good. He looked very good. And I'm excited for him. I'm excited for the Yankees to, to keep on dominating, at least in the regular season. You know, now the postseason is going to be a different story for me. I'm still going to have my concerns there. But again, I don't want to jump ahead. You know, I, I find myself jumping ahead so much, but. There are some concerns, though. You know, I do love the offense, but um, let's head to break. I'll tell you what, we're going to head to break. And then as soon as we get back from break, we'll, I'll talk about a few things I would like to see the Yankees start picking up with as we go down the stretch of the season, you know, because we're already eight games in, you know, pretty soon we're going to be talking about a third of the season being in the books. So um, we're going to take a break. And as soon as we get back, we'll talk about some of the pros, some of the cons, um, despite it being a great weekend. All right, we'll be right back. Hey guys, really quick, I just want to remind you, if you haven't yet, please go to my website at nysportstalkrc.wordpress.com forward slash connect and subscribe to the podcast, subscribe to the blog, and follow me on social media. That's all you got to do. Just go to my website, nysportstalkrc.wordpress.com forward slash connect. All right, let's get back to the show. like you know every time this this pitching staff goes out there outside of Garrett Cole it's like a gigantic question mark that's my concern you know it feels like every year outside of whoever our ace is that season there's a lot of question about who's going to be that next guy right who right now the Yankees don't have an identity outside of Garrett Cole who is going to be that second guy who you can rely on from right now from today to the very fucking end of October and you know Tanaka's great in October, so I'll give him a pass because he's usually lights out. But I still want that second guy, that second ace, you know, that 1B, right? Garrett Cole is 1A. I want that 1B. And we don't have that outside of him. You know, Jordan Montgomery, again, going to be a very solid middleman. Jay Happ is at the end of his career. Um, you know, he was never anything more than number three. Um, who else am I missing? Happ, we t- uh Tanaka, Cole, and who the fuck am I missing? Paxson, obviously, tonight. Paxson's concerning, man. He, he, I never bought into that gigantic hype that Yankees fans were, were trying to bring upon when the Yankees traded for Paxson. You know, because I know he's a good pitcher, but I feel like people were acting like he was this, this one B that I was, just telling it. I feel like people expected him to be that one B, that second ace, if you would. But I don't see him as an ace type of pitcher. I don't see him as a second, a number two. I don't, I don't. I see him as a number three, maybe a number four, you know, who can have his occasional gems who where he'll look like a number one, number two. But for the most part, he's going to be that number three, four guy, that middle to back and guy. I don't see him, I don't know. I don't hype him up as much as you all do. It seems like a lot of Yankees fans love this James Paxson guy because he's got good stuff or because he threw a no hitter one time a couple years ago, whatever it is that intrigues them. They really do. They like the strikeout totals. Maybe it's that I, but I don't see it. You know, I see a guy who's one, he's not reliable in terms of staying healthy Two, his on field production is never usually greater than, you know, a mid threes ERA, somebody who can you know go out there and, and pitch great sometimes, but so, so, you know, other times and just be a, a, I just think he's a number three, you know, pitcher. I don't think he's anything better than that. Um, 
So I don't think he's going to be that guy after Cole that'll be that 110% reliable pitcher. Um, so I don't, it's, it's concerning to me down the stretch, right? Again, in the regular season, we're going to be fine. I expect this Yankees team to win at least 35 to 40 games. And I expect them to take their division if all goes um, as planned. But come the playoff time, man, you're not going to have Cole on the mound every single night. You're going to have to have other guys chip in. Look how the Washington Nationals did it. They won with starting pitching. Um, you know, the bullpen's great to have, but they're going to wear down as they, you know, as they do here and there. Um, I, I don't think you can bullpen your way to a championship. Um especially in the Yankees case where there are some issues on the other side of the diamond too. And, you know, I love the home rumble. And again, I'm going to go back to what we were saying earlier with what a Rob was saying too, but you need those contact guys. You need more guys who are going to string together hits as opposed to um, be more streaky and hit the home run and strike out a lot. Right. It still feels to me that the Yankees outside of LeMayu outside of um, a few other guys, maybe, have a lot of strikeout prone guys. They still have Gary Sanchez who's going to strike out or hit his home run and go on his hot and cold streaks. Stanton, I haven't seen, you know, it's been a terrific start, but I still feel like he's one of those strikeout home run type of guys. The discipline has improved. So hopefully that stays and that remains and, and continues to become a theme here down the stretch. And, and Stanton remains consistent in terms of his uh, plate recognition and stuff, pitch recognition. Um, but I really would like the Yankees to, you know, be that team that can hit at a high clip, right? The last Yankees team to win a World Series was the last time they had their highest batting average. Um, you know, they still hit a bunch of homers, but they hit over 280. You know, the the Nationals last postseason had a high batting average, as well as the on base and the slugging and all that good stuff that I know a lot of people like to look at today. But they were a high hitting team, a high volume hitting team. The Houston Astros, fuck, they cheated so they could become that high-volume hitting team and make contact as much as they did. Um, you know, you just have to – there needs to be that balance, right? The homers are great, but we need more guys to string together hits like the Mayu is doing right now and, you know, to, to complement freaks of nature like Judge who could just hit a home run every time he's up. Um, so, yeah, it, it's great. It is. It is great to see – this team doing what they're uh, doing right now. And I just hope it can continue. This Yankees team is something else right now. I am not complaining. Um, but man, Aaron judge, let's see if I can get that clip up and play it here. Play the volume. Cause Vasgersian went nuts. I don't know if anybody was, was you know, was, I don't know if anyone was watching the game uh, with the volume on, because I know a lot of people like to mute a rod, but Baskersian went fucking nuts for both of Judge's homers. Uh, and that second one, he was just off the charts insane. Let's see if we can get the audio real quick. I'll play it for you guys. Two oh, oh, Judge is hit a bunch to left. He did it again. Oh, oh, oh my. He goes insane, and I, and I love that. I love how hyped up he gets, and that's a good baseball announcer right there. That's that's a hell of an announcer. Um, I think Vasquez does a good job. I love the uh, Santa Maria call he does too. Um, but he gets you he gets you excited, despite there being no crowd in the stands, guys. Hey, I, I'll give credit to Vasquez there. He gets you hype for that home run, you know. But man, Judge is on some tear right now. I tell you, man, he's on an MVP tear at the moment, right? Again, we're eight games in, seven and one. Everything's looking great. Um, but it, it is early, so I understand why. Um, um, I understand it's early. You know, I, I do know that you need to. Again, you just you just hope they can sustain this in October. And um, the home runs are nice. I just hope that everything can all string together in the end. I hope they can be that team in the very end that, and I, I apologize because I say this so fucking much where I'm tired of hearing it myself, but I hope that my hope is that in the end, the Yankees can be that team that gets that balance of power and contact as well as get great starting pitching in the postseason down the stretch. And so right now I want to see a little more of that um, starting pitching than 
start to come together. Need some more starting pitching, more length out of our guys. Um, and then, you know, maybe we can get Torres going to bring one of those contact bats, um, like Miggy as well. Those two guys are also two guys I probably should have mentioned when I was talking about those guys who can string together hits and hit the ball, make contact um, at a decent rate. Those guys are, play a big part in that too, because you remember back in their rookie seasons when they were both mashing together, that's what made the Yankees thrive so much that season in 2017. Yeah. So we need them to get going. You know, both of them are kind of struggling right now. Miggy's more understandable being that he's not getting everyday playing time. It's kind of been more sporadic, but Torres, you know, he's had two productive seasons under his belt. He needs to, you know, he's kind of, establishing an identity for himself as this next upcoming superstar the Yankees are grooming. So he needs to kind of step it up soon, and hopefully he can wake up um, as the Yankees head to play Philadelphia um, for four games um, split between home and away um, this upcoming week. So we'll see how everybody how everybody does there. Hopefully it um, – is it – now I don't know if it's starting out home and then we're going on the road, or I don't know if it's vice versa, but – We'll see. Again, guys, not much of a, you know, dissection in tonight's episode. Kind of just talking fast. I'm excited coming straight off the game. So I do apologize for um, a piss poor product once again. I feel like a lot of these episodes so far, um, all three of them have been very fucking piss poor in terms of the quality. Just because I've been doing it, you know, based off of, I, I've been fucking going right to the recording off the game. So I'm talking straight off, you know, straight up with my reaction right now. This is just raw emotion. So I haven't really sat down and took a bunch of notes. It's just me talking off the top of my head. So it's probably not the best podcast. Um, I do apologize for that. I'll try to clean it up and I'll try to make it more uh, organized and more entertaining and interesting for you guys as we go along. But yeah, that's I'm sorry. I I don't like the fucking product I'm putting out right now for you guys. Um, I'm just excited. You know, I'm doing, again, I'm recording these right after the game. So I'm, I'm on my adrenaline rush at the moment, but it's good that we're winning. Um, let's just keep doing it and um, we're going to wrap it up guys. That's all I got for tonight. So let's do the NYY MYK question of the day and then we'll, uh, we'll call it a night. All right. All right, so last time out in the NYY NYK question of the day for episode 145 uh, and 144, I asked you, um, Bernie Williams, who played 16 seasons all with the Yankees, um, retired in what year? So, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Fuck, fuck. I messed that one up. Uh, Bernie Williams' last season in the MLB was what season? So what year was his final season in baseball? Bernie Williams. What year was Bernie Williams' final season in baseball? So uh, the answer to that question was 2006. That was his final year in baseball. He retired after that season. So 2006 was the final year of Bernie's career. Um, But tonight's NYY, NYK question of the day is a very easy one. Being that it's it's recent, it's today. We we just talked about it. Um, But the last Yankee... Uh, before tonight, before Aaron Judge did so tonight, who was the last Yankee to hit five consecutive home runs? You know, so who was the last Yankee to hit a home run in five consecutive games? Rather, um, before Aaron Judge did so tonight, uh, they said it on the telecast tonight. But I want to see if you were paying attention. Uh, so one last time for tonight's NYYMYK question of the day: uh, Before tonight, who was the last Yankee to homer in five consecutive games? So message me or comment on uh, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Let me know the answer. All right, guys, thank you so much. Uh, We're going to wrap it up. This has been your host, Rob Carbone, with episode 145 of BD4. Recording on a uh, Sunday night just after the game, and I should have it up by midnight. So, guys, thank you so much for stopping by, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, ciao.